In this presentation we're going to work with some uh, simple exercises uh, for data wrangling, data manipulation and data transformation with R. We're going to use in particular subsets in this exercise quite a lot. Uh, first off what we're going to do is we're going to determine the names of this data set Iris. Iris is an inbuilt data set in R. And what we want is to find out the number of rows and the number of columns. Very simple approach here is um, just use the command names and just specify the name of the data set Iris. Just as a quick remark, let me go up here. This is the, the R console here. We don't actually have to do anything to uh, bring up, uh, we don't have to load Iris or anything like that. It's an inbuilt data set in R. It's a sort of one of the inbuilt data data sets in R that's used so you can have data sets to practice with. So it's just inbuilt in R. I can't really say that much more than it. So um, the names of the variables. So we have five columns. Okay. Uh, sepal length, sepal dot length, sepal dot width, petal dot length, petal dot width and species. So there are five columns and there you have five variables and th each of the variables has a name and those are the variables there, sepal length, sepal width and so on. The next thing we're going to look at is DIM which stands for dimensions. So it's the dimensions of iris and the answer we get here is if we type that in 150 and 5. Let's have a go at that. DIM iris 150 and 5. Now that essentially says is what that essentially says is that we have 150 rows and 5 columns and we see the 5 columns there just above us. So I'm going to do follow that same exercise. Now what I'm going to do is just take, take a slightly different approach and um, I'm going to do the exact same uh, uh, exercise again but I just want to sort of show off some other commands. What we want to find out is the name of the columns and another command we can use there is call names that gives the name of the columns iris call names of iris there we go sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and species and so on n row is the number of rows and n call is the number of columns uh, n row and n call sometimes be quite, there's some upper, uh, calculations where those little commands can be quite useful let's just have a look at there n call let's just try it n call there quickly Iris and call of iris. Number of columns of iris. There we have it there again. Five. Now, next, let's move on here. So we got a little exercise ahead of us. I'm just going to scroll up here. So, exercise two compute the mean of all of the numeric variables. And so, the numeric variables are the first four columns of the iris data set. Uh, what we could do there is approach one each column individually calculate the uh, mean so we could first off specify the first column that's how you specify the first column of iris so uh, iris uh, open bracket there square bracket now we're, we're specifying all the rows so where we could specify rows we're going to leave it empty Okay, so there's nothing between the bracket and the comma. We're going to specify the first column, so that's why we have a, why we have a one there. Close the bracket, and then you uh, so iris, the first column of iris, get the mean of that, and so we're going to use the mean command, mean, open bracket, close bracket. Okay, so 5.843. Likewise, we could do for all the other commands there. Mean of iris, column two. Mean of iris, column three. Mean of iris, column four. That's how we might go about it, doing it there. There's another command we can use called call means, and so capital. Uh, sorry, just as a remark, in this we have a capital M in the middle. C O L capital M me, uh, E A N S. That is called camel case. Now this is sort of thing that drives people who are familiar with other programming languages. It drives them. A little bit crazy 
uh, about R because there's no consistency in this regard and you have to sort of think, think yeah maybe they have a point this is what they call camel case where the capital M is in the middle so watch out for that uh, call means that's the column means there now iris now we have to specify the first four columns only the reason for that is let's go back here to um, the R console is that the fifth column is not a numeric Satosa uh, it's a it's a what they call a factor variable. It's a categorical variable, so it doesn't have a mean. And if you try looking for the mean, you will get an error. So what you are interested in only is the first four columns, which I have specified here, columns one to four. So rather than all five columns, if we try to for all five columns, we get a mistake. So um, okay, uh, another approach we could take is use the apply function and if you want to get I, I certainly recommend getting uh, yourselves familiar with the apply function because it's really handy to know how to use it so the second argument is the second argument is to specify the number of row uh, to specify row or column wise operation so if you want to get the column of each uh, the, the mean of each column or the mean of each row, we have to specify what orientation we want our, our 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 function to take. So first off, this is our data set here again: iris one to four, columns one to four. So it's just the first four columns of iris. Mean, okay. Now this value here too means we're working on a column-wise basis. So we're looking for the column means and not the row means. If we have a one there, that means the row means not what we're looking for. There's some other possible uh, data sets where a, a row mean is of interest but not in this particular case. What we have to do there is specify columns and for that we have to specify a 2. Okay, so apply data set orientation 1 or 2 and then mean. Okay, and then we get the same answers there again. Okay, so moving on from that, just a little bit more. Compute the interquartile range of all the numeric variables. Well, what I'm going to do here is follow from the. Um, uh, use, I'm going to use the apply uh, command again. This is what we're why the apply command is quite useful. Now I just picked the interquartile range just because, just as mean and standard deviation are sort of, you know. Just to sort of shake things up a bit, let's just do some other things there, uh, other commands. Interquartile range, so apply, and essentially what we're doing is for all the numeric variables, so it's the, we're working along the columns, one to four, and again, two for columns, and we are going to just ask for the interquartile range of the columns of iris, when iris is just one to four. There we have it there. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. Okay. Now, I've sort of chopped out a few exercises, so I've jumped from 3 to 6. Uh, just for the sake, I should have renumbered them, but for the sake of brevity, I just sort of went here for columns, or exercise 6. Now, there are three species of iris. Determine the uh, summary statistics for the Virginica species only. Also, determine the five number summary for the petal widths of the virginicas and the command for that is 5num. So what I'm going to do is actually set up this data set here verge virg and what I want to do is I want to subset it such that we're only dealing with the species of iris that are virginica. So what I'm going to do here is subset this data set iris according to this logical condition. This is a logical condition is the uh, species of iris is that equal now that's a logical equals there just notice that it's two equal signs together uh, is that equal to virginica and there are 50 cases where that will be yes and there will be 100 cases where it will be no so it picks out the virginicas only now if you notice down here I wrote out the summary here Setosa, versicolor, there's no species of uh, Setosa, there's no species versicolor. We just have 50 virginicas. Now, um, I, if you, just in case you're wondering, have I gone too far there? Uh, I, gotta, I should have a video up about the Iris dataset where I just talk about it and 
So if you're familiar with the Iris data set, this should be okay. If you're not familiar with the Iris data set, this is probably the Iris data set is probably something you should familiarize yourself first before and then come back to this video. So um sample length, sample width, petal length, petal width, and there we have the uh the summary statistics for each of those five four variables. And that's great, and uh, it's just the virginicas only. We're not taking into account the cetosis or versicolors. And what we are asked to do here is find the five number summary for the uh, virginicas. Five number summary is very similar to the summary output. Uh, it's just a special command. It's two keys, five number summary. There we have there, 1.4, 1.8, and so on and it's actually just very similar to this it's essentially the minimum first quartile median third quartile maximum it's just a different command for getting the same information although in some circumstances you will get slightly different answers just because the quantile functions are not straightforward that's all I'm going to say about that I'll come back to the quantile function stuff in another time now exercise 7 uh, what we're going to do here in this exercise is we're going to search for large petal widths and for this uh, exercise the only what we're particularly interested in is a petal width of greater than size 2. It doesn't matter if it's virginica, setosa or versicolor as long as the petal width is greater than 2 we're going to call that a large petal width. By the way that's just me coming up with an arbitrary um, way of divvying up the data. So what I'm going to do here is subset the data again and we're interested in petal width so we're going to work on uh, this with this variable to construct a logical uh, condition and the logical condition is is the petal width of iris greater than 2. Now looking down here it turns out that there is only 23 uh, cases of iris that have a petal width greater than 2 and it turns out all of them are virginica now that's just by accident it's not really related to my last exercise up there but there we have the summary statistics for the subgroups there uh, for each or for our, our particular subgroup and again I just picked petal width greater than 2 uh, just for a bit of um, so just to sort of just to sort of be how should I put it a bit more realistic about the type of exercise you have to do so large PW large petal width and that's the summary statistics for the large petal width uh, irises anyway that's enough of that we've done a lot of R there let's call it a day